right, beautiful, beautiful. Hey, uh, can we can we get up for the band? Can we? I, I mean, come on. Now, now listen. I I'm gonna ask you guys to to give it up even 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 harder for this next group. These are the unsung heroes of a Sunday morning worship experience. The tech crew. Can we give it up for the tech production? Because uh, listen, um, God loves to to do things last minute. He loves to keep you on your toes, in and out of season, we say, in, in ministry. And I was thrown into uh, the tech production area last minute on Thursday, um, greeting people literally like a minute before we started. Hey, can you come run some slides? I'm like, Psh, bet. Like if, if, I wasn't, if, if I wasn't doing what I'm doing now with the family ministry and, and, and where God called me here, like I, I would love to be in the tech and in the, in the audio and, and doing slides. And, and let me tell you, I know a lot of you think when the slides are wrong, it's the guy in the back's fault. And you're like, was he not doing paying attention? Is he on his phone? No, it's not always the guy in the back's fault. Trust me, sometimes the notes just aren't there. Like, for instance, I'm there. I get this last minute thing as well. Like, hey, homeboy's not going to use his notes. Like, okay, great. Halfway through it. Hey, I got a slide up. Uh, hey, 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 can you put that slide up there? It looks like a pyramid. And I'm like, what? What? Like, and I'm doing, and all of a sudden I hear, next, next, next. I'm like, the slide's not there. And Jordan's running over. He's like, come on, man, the slide's there. I'm like, where in this slide isn't there? And he's like, oh, junk, the slide's not there. And then the guy on the stage, he's like, oh, you know how it is, technology. And it's like, way to make me look like a goofball. Like, I didn't have it together. But the intention was there. The intention for the notes were there, right? <laughs> the intention was there. And today, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about intentions and actions, right? The, the, the main idea is I will close the gap between my intentions and my actions. We're very good, very good as a people uh, uh, with intentions, right? We have all the best intentions in the world. You guys ever heard the quote, the, the, the road to hell is paved with what? Good intentions. Do you guys know where that came from? Does anybody? So it, it is a play off of, off of some of the Proverbs of Solomon. It isn't actually a full, legit proverb of Solomon. But there was this author. His name was Henry G. Bonn. And he wrote a book of Proverbs. And, uh, and, and out of all that stuff, that was one of the things he put in there. Right? The road to hell is paved with good intentions. So back in 1855, my man coined that phrase. And it is. Because... No matter what, if you don't follow through with the intention and there's no action, you, you know what I'm saying? It could be the best idea in the world. But if there's no action to it, it's kind of empty, right? It's kind of hollow. Uh, I never remember one Christmas, my uncle, he, uh, he's notorious for getting weird gifts. Um, and, and this Christmas, I was super excited. He, he worked at this coach store, okay? And it was a, I, I get this present. And I open it up, and it's a wallet box. And I'm like, oh, snap, I got a coach wallet? I open the box. There's nothing in the box. And he's like, oh, man, they must have forgot to put it in there. I, 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 I really wanted that for you, man. Oh, well, it was a thought that counts, right? That's, that's what you say, you know, you know when, when you really don't plan on following through. It's a thought that counts. Or have you ever been working hard and doing something, and you're right at the very end, and someone comes up and be like, oh, man, if you would have just waited, I, man, I would have helped you. Or, hey, I saw you were moving this weekend. Why didn't you call me? I would have helped you. Well, why didn't you just say, hey, come on, I'm going to come and help you. Why do I have to call you? The intention's there, but is there any action? And what does that, what's that leave us feeling when, when people say that? We feel kind of empty. Just like that wallet box. We're empty. We're kind of disappointed, right? And, and within our marriage, and for those that are married, and within relationships, all the intention is there, right? I intended to get up and mow the yard, but what I do, <laughs> sat on the couch, right? And then my wife intended to remind me to mow the yard, and it wasn't until she put some stuff into action that I actually got up. And mowed the yard, amen. Are you guys? Am I the only one? Like, is that does that only happen to me? I, hey, well, well, praise praise God, praise Jesus for the grace uh, and, and and that He saves sinners like me. Um, so so this week we're gonna be in Song of Songs, Song of Solomon for some of you guys. 
I pulled out the NLT because I don't have one of those cool CSBs, uh, the uh, Charles Spurgeon Bible. That's not what that stands for. But I'm rocking the NLT today. So if you got that, you can pull it up on your phones. Or if you have the Bible, go ahead and, and pull that up. Song of Songs, chapter 7. Uh, and, 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 and yeah, so we'll be looking at what it looks like to close the gap between intentions and actions. And uh, most of the time in relationships, we judge others by their actions. We judge others by their actions. How dare they? I can't believe they did that. Can you believe that, they, what they did? But then when it comes to ourselves, you know what happens? We like to judge ourselves by our intentions, not by our actions, by our intentions. It's real easy to sit on that judgment seat and throw shade at everybody else. But let me tell you, Christ follower, the judgment seat is not reserved for us. That's reserved for God the Father. You know what's reserved for us? The mercy seat. The mercy seat. And too many of us like that judgment seat. And it's time to get up and move on down the line. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, three different ways that we're going to look at to help uh, close the gap between our intentions and actions. The first is if you think something good, say it. If you think something good, say it. So let's do this. I'm going to pray. We're just going to jump right into chapter 7. We're going to read through it, maybe stop a little bit along the way, talk about come some of the verses. But uh, we're, we're going to rock this thing out today. Are you all ready? Man, I hope so. I hope so. I, man, I got up this morning, and uh, like Tim said, he called me on, on Friday. Well, he texted me because he had no voice. He's, hey, can you do this? And, and I'm going to tell you what, I, I, I hate when Tim's sick. Not because he's sick, but because he gives me so much more to do. Um, rather than if he's just at the office with me, my phone did not stop. My phone went dead. My phone never dies. My phone went dead from how much Tim kept hitting me up. Hey, can, hey, by the way, hey, by the way. And I'm like, dude, if you don't go to bed, stop, t go to bed and rest. But he thinks because he can't talk. Oh, but I can text. Man. But my man's on the mend, and, uh, and, and he called me up last minute, and he, or texted me last minute and said, hey, can you do this? And I woke up this morning. And uh, let me let me just tell you, I I'm, I'm so I feel so blessed that God can take a broken man, someone who <laughs> I didn't deserve, I didn't deserve grace, I didn't deserve the mercy He showed me, but the fact that He uses broken things, broken people, redeems them, restores them to bring Him glory, and, and I, I never feel worthy to stand up here. And that's me, and that's the flesh. I'm so thankful that our God is faithful, right? He is faithful, and uh, even when I'm unfaithful, he's faithful. And I got to thinking, I know Tim did a little bit of a recap of last week, but I got to thinking about the last promise that we talked about. And we talked about this in our discovery group on Tuesday. And this was to never do drop the D-bomb. Never drop the D-bomb. Does anyone know what the D-bomb is? Divorce. So my wife and I, we, we both come from divorced families. My dad's been married four times. Her mom's had so many boyfriends. My mom's had so many boyfriends. Um, and, and when we got together, it wasn't within three weeks of us dating. We, 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 we kind of knew that this was it. We knew. And uh, we said, listen, if, if we do ever decide to get married, it's, it's going to be forever. And if we have kids, it's, we're, we're not leaving them like our parents did us. Now, we weren't Christ followers at the time, but we stood on that principle that marriage is something that's to, to be forever. Like I said, we, we didn't really, weren't following God and knew these godly standards, but that was one thing that we said we won't, we won't bow to the world when it comes to this. This is something that we will fight for. Now, the Bible also talks about there is times where you can leave your spouse. And, and that time is, one, if they die, and usually you got to marry their sister or something um, to take care of them, right? It happened. Trust me, it happened. Grok some Old Testament. Or, and that's kind of an awkward situation, you know? Um, but, the, but the other one is if one of the partners is unfaithful, you have just cause to leave that relationship. And then I look when Jesus comes on the scene, and I look at God's promises all throughout the Bible, 
If God left us when we were unfaithful, if he decided to divorce us when we were unfaithful, man, we'd be in a rough state. But as far as I can see, God's word says uh, he, he will never leave you nor forsake you, right? While we are unfaithful, he is faithful, and he stays with us, even though most of us should, should be left in the dust. And, and I, that just really had stuck out to me last week as we were talking about not just hearing the word but applying the word and this promise of to never drop the D-bomb. And, uh, and, and listen, where my wife and I started out with the intention of doing that, no, there's been some action, and we've never used that in a fight. We, we don't use that as a weapon, right? We talk about conflict and, and combat. That is something we never use. And listen, if you're in here today and you're married, you're single, don't, don't play with that. that, that is, that's, you know what I'm saying? How would you feel if, if God started playing with that with us? You know what? I don't divorce you. Dang. But he will never leave us nor forsake us. So I uh, just wanted to share that with you, something I got out of last week's message. I hope that you, you've been, man, this series has been amazing. I've loved, have you guys loved this series so far? Right? Some of you guys, okay, that's cool. That's cool. Hey, don't worry about it. And, you know, God loves sex. We thought you guys would love that. Uh, hopefully spice up some of your marriages that have been kind of dull lately. But, um, and y'all know I'm, I'm telling the truth. Don't, hey, it's okay. But uh, let's look at, let's look at uh, chapter 7. So Solomon all throughout this uh, <laughs> this 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 book of the Bible, man. He him and his girl have just been going back and forth. This beautiful love letter to each other. When's the last time you wrote a love letter to your spouse? When's the last time you wrote them something in the morning? Maybe just left it on the counter. Maybe put it in their lunch. Maybe slid it in their Bible. Well, some of us don't open our Bible, so that just stay there forever. But just put it somewhere in their car. Maybe on their phone, because we all look at our phone. Amen. Right? When's the last time you wrote a love letter? And so this is just a beautiful love letter back and forth. And Solomon, what did he ask God for? God said, I'm going to give you whatever you want. What are you asking for? Wisdom. So as he's speaking these nuggets of truth, there's some wise stuff in here. So let's not neglect it. All right. So let's pray. Jump into God's word. Father, thank you again for today. God, just thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That you, you never leave us. You're always faithful. God, you're so patient with us, so patient. We're, we're so stubborn and hard-headed, and we want to get our way own way, and we, we just want to do what we want to do most of the time. And God, thank you for having the grace and the patience with us. God, and thank you for, for letting us have our own way sometimes, even though you know it's not good for us. Sometimes, Father, that's, that's the only way we're going to learn. And, and so thank you for those lessons. God, thank you for this, this word this morning. Thank you for Solomon and, and his example uh, in, in, in this book. And uh, again, I, I'm just I'm just so thankful. I, I, in the state of appreciation, Father, I just, man, I'm in awe of how much you love us. And so uh, speak through this word this morning. Speak through me. Be glorified in everything we say and do. We love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So it starts off like this. You ready? Get ready. It's going to get eight. It's going to get wild. Get ready. All right. Ah, verse one. How beautiful are your sandaled feet, O queenly maiden. Anybody in here wear sandals? How, how many people get pedicures? How many people? Come on, guys. You can raise your hand. I like pedicures. All right. That's what's up. It's okay. It's manly to get pedicures. You know why the, the ones that, that aren't raising their hands that don't think it's manly to get pedicures? It's because y'all never had a pedicure. Amen. Ladies, am I right? Listen, I, I, I heard a, a comedian talk about this one time. He said, it basically, it's, it's as close as you could get to being a king. You're in this chair. It's massaging you the whole time, right? They're, 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 they're rubbing lotion and massaging your feet and getting you all right. You're, you're one step away from being a king. Like, all you need is the grapes, right? It's like, grapes, please, right? That's, that's basically, you're, you're, you're that close. And so, guys, listen, it's okay to get a pedicure. Clean them feet. Your wife, will, your ladies will appreciate it if you... Uh, Climb into bed and stop scratching them with your gnarly toes, right? <laughs> How beautiful are your sandaled feet, O queenly maiden. Your rounded thighs whew, are like jewels, the work of skilled craftsmen. Notice he didn't say your bony thighs, okay? The world has it wrong. Listen, ladies, it's okay to have rounded thighs. Look, the wisest man ever loves some rounded thighs, okay? <laughs> 
Your navel is perfectly formed like a goblet filled with mixed wine. Here you go. You ready for this? Between your thighs lies a mound of wheat bordered with lilies. Before we go to that one, let's go back to the navel real quick. Because uh, there's a lot to unpack here. So the belly button, the navel, some of us, who, who's got an Audi? Who's got an Audi? Who's got an any? I got any. Who's got an in-betweeny? It's just kind of like, right? The navel is, is one of the coolest things ever. One, it, 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 it's where a baby is connected to the mother, and it provides life to that baby, Right? And I was just reading the other day, I think Pastor Tim was in the office, and it was like, stuff about the navel. No, it was me and my wife. We were in bed, and it was like, stuff about the navel. And if you rub different oils on the navel, like, it helps with different things, like uh, blood pressure, sinuses, this and that. And I'm just like, that is crazy. But think about it. That's where you were getting life, right? And so it's no, it's no wonder that that thing is such, so amazing. But we forget about it, right? The only time we notice it's there is when we go like this and go, woo, right? Right, But the navel in Israel is known as the heart of the emotions. Mm. See, they believe that's where the emotions were contained. And wine has always represented the very best of God's blessing. Right? What did Jesus do his first miracle? He turned water into wine. He could have done anything else. That's what he did first. And so he, he, he's, he's, he's describing his bride, right? And he's being very uh, intentional about the words he's using, right? He's got admiration for his wife. Can you tell that in his words? The admiration he has for, 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 for his bride, uh, he's showing the appreciation, the approval. He has affection for his wife. Husbands, wives, when was the last time you showed some admiration? A couple weeks ago, Pastor Tim talked about that, about kind words, right? What we should do, what we should say, admiration, affirmation. We need to hear that. And listen, ladies, guys need to hear that too. Can, can I get an amen? I know it's not maybe the manliest thing to say, but we need to hear that too. We like to be appreciated, right? It's okay. Hey, we can all be honest with each other in here. We like to hear sometimes, hey, Man, you're looking mighty handsome today. Man, you are rocking that dad bod like nobody else today, right? Man, your feet look good after that pedicure, right? Hey, so ladies, listen, as much as I know you want to hear it, think about how much we would like to hear it. But what gets in the way with us is our pride, that manly pride, that machismo, that, that, that thing that we, we're not supposed to admit that we like emotions and this and that. But yeah, we do. It's nice every now and then. So then he goes on in the second part after he talks about the navel. And this is really interesting. Between your thighs lies a mound of wheat bordered with lilies. I'll let you use your imagination for that one. Let's go on to verse 3. He, hey, he, he keeps going, man. My man's like laying it all out. Your breasts are like two fawns, twin fawns of a gazelle. Now, this is the second time he's talked about breasts. Uh, I believe it was in chapter 5 he talked about her breast. So uh, if you're wondering, you know what kind of man Solomon is. He's, he's not, not, a, not a hiney man. He's probably a breast man because he's been very appreciative of what God has blessed her with. Amen? Guys, it's okay to compliment your wife on her features. God made her that way. Compliment her on those, right? But you can see, man, this guy's wise. He's complimenting everything. Sometimes women are insecure. Amen? Sometimes guys are insecure. Amen? That's right. Sometimes guys are insecure, but guess what? He's going on. He's still complimenting. You know what I'm saying? Speaking those love, those words of admiration, that affection. He goes on. He keeps going. He says, your neck is as beautiful as an ivory tower. Your eyes are like sparkling pools in Heshbon by the gate of the Bath Rabim. Your nose is as fine as the Tower of Lebanon overlooking Damascus. Every word he speaks has intention. He's not just spouting off a bunch of junk that he read in some book, How to Impress Your Lady in Five Days. Every word he's speaking, he's speaking with intention. Intention to build her up, 
the attention to show appreciation. Proverbs 18, 21 says, the tongue can bring life or death. When you don't tell people something good, generally they think something bad. A lot of the times in relationships, when there's this lack of appreciation, there's this lack of celebration, there's this lack of admiration, we start thinking bad things. Well, am I not good enough? Am I not doing enough? Am I not handsome enough? Am I not pretty enough? Right? Is my neck not long enough? Is it not like a tower? That's not what we think, but, you know. Kind of weird how they say that, but back in those days, that, that was one of the features that was beautiful, along with the nose, you know, I'm, 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 when she says something about the nose being, uh, what did he say, your nose, your nose is as fine as the Tower of Lebanon, to me, I get a picture of a big nose, but hey, he, he loves that about her, he's appreciating that about her, maybe she's self-conscious about that, and so what is he doing? He's speaking words of life into her, telling her how beautiful she is. To him. And listen, to the rest of the world, who cares? You know what I'm saying? Who cares? But, but I'm telling you, husbands, wives, boyfriends, girlfriends, singles, make sure you take time to appreciate. Make, turn, make, turn, make sure you take time to build each other up. That's what's lacking in a marriage. We're so quick to tear each other down and to point out our faults and what's wrong with each other and what we did wrong. That we don't take time to build each other up. And it's like that in companies too. The reason most employees leave a company is because they don't feel appreciated. Had boss man just said a couple times, hey, good job. Hey, man, I love the way you did that rather than, hey, you didn't do enough. You know what I'm saying? You don't feel appreciated. Where are you going to go? Somewhere where you feel appreciated. And so listen, if you think something good, say it. Amen? Right, the next one, I want to look down. If you think something special, do it. When's the last time you did something special for your partner? Just, just think on that. When's the last time you did something special? Something out of the ordinary. I know a lot of us have we, our routines. Maybe Monday is always a date night for you. Maybe this and that. And I'm not saying that's not special, but that's come to be expected now. When's the last time you did something special? I know when, when I was dating, me and my wife were dating, um, I couldn't wait to do special things for her. I couldn't wait to surprise her with flowers. I couldn't wait to, to, to have her have dinner cooked when she got home, when she came over to my house, thinking we were going to go out to eat, but no, I've cooked dinner. You know, I couldn't wait to do those things. But the longer you spend together, the more you take that for granted. Amen. You start to, you start to, to neglect that and, and doing special things for each other. I'm telling you, man, if, if I think something special, I'm going to do it. And I want you guys to be that way too. Listen, don't just, don't just sit there and, and, and let the moment go by. No, capitalize on it, man. Intentions, yeah, they're all right. But no, what are we talking about? We're talking about bridging the gap between intentions and actions. It's time to stop th thinking. It's time to stop just talking a good game. And it's time to start really living it out. Amen? So I want you guys to think in here today. What can I do that is special for my partner? And listen, singles, teenagers in here, hey, what can I do that's special for my parents? It doesn't have to be in the context of just marriage. And No, this is about a relationship. Hey, teens, when's the last time you did something special for your parents? Because last I checked, they do everything for you, right? And most of the time, we act like spoiled little brats, but what do we, we still get hooked up. Amen? I say we like I'm a teenager, I'm 38 over here, but I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm going back. Like, I spend so much time with these guys, I feel like a teenager sometimes, minus the body, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was like 135 back in the day, lean, mean, but... But seriously, I, I'm, I'm, I'm saying, like, think about this, man. And it doesn't have to be for your spouse or your parents. Just your, 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 your people at work that you work with. Man, it goes a long way. I tell you what, we have this place that we get our oil changed, and we are very blessed. We don't never ask for things to be free or this and that. Man, we go in there because we love the, the, the people and we love the service. And you know what? They bless us 
sometimes by saying, hey, you had, uh, you had some, some tie rods that, that, were, that were going bad and coming off. So guess what we did? Hey, man, we fixed those tie rods for you. Don't even worry about it. We love you. Bless you. You know how expensive that is, let alone manpower and labor and time? But they, 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 they thought something special, right? They thought of something special, and they did it. And so you know what? That in turn makes us say, dang, how can we, not because we want to repay them, but how can we bless them? And, and it's just this awesome circle. A lot of people say a vicious circle. This is just an awesome circle. And just imagine if we had that in our lives, we had more awesome circles. So let's look at, at, at five real quick. Verse five, it says, your head is as majestic as Mount Carmel, not caramel, Carmel. And the sheen of your hair radiates royalty. The king is held captive by its tresses. Does anyone know what captive means? Who knows what, who knows what captive means? Raise your hand if you know what captive means. Okay, cool, man. We all have Florida educations in here. I love it. Um, yeah, hey, to be held captive is, is, is to bind, to harness, right? To be put in bonds. Like, you can't help but look. You're, you're held captive. It's kind of like what, what happens on, on 95 or you're going down the road and you're wondering, why are we going so slow? And 10 minutes later, you come up on a car pulled over. Like, what? why are we? Oh, yeah, look, he's pulled over, right? But we're held captive <laughs> by the goofiest things, right? And guess what? It's causing everybody to go slow. We ain't never seen nobody pulled over before. You know what I'm saying? Like, man. And y'all say Tim has ADD. No, man. Most of us, we're like, yeah, yeah, ooh, car, yeah. <laughs> but I love, I, love, I love how my man is held captive in a good way by his bride's beauty. And what does he do? He doesn't keep quiet about it. Again, he tells her, oh, how beautiful you are. That's good. How pleasing, my love. How full of delights you are. You are slender like a palm tree, and your breasts are like clusters of fruit. Again, my man, he's going on. This is twice now in this chapter. He's talking about her breast. And I guarantee you, he just didn't have good intentions about talking about her breast. I guarantee you he bridged the gap and there was some action there. Amen. All right. I'm just saying, I, this is scripture. I'm just, hey, God's word, man. I said, I will climb. See, here we go. Here's the action. I will climb the palm tree and take hold of its fruit. My man didn't say, there's some nice coconuts. I think I'm just going to stare at them for a minute. My man said, he didn't even say, come here, woman. He said, hey, coming at you. I'm about to climb that tree, right? <laughs> it's, it's, it's about to be, yeah, we're about to have some, uh, some fun time, right? My man put it into action. Some of us need to stop being so passive and so, and, and, and so timid. And some of us need to take more action. Amen? Fives are like, yeah, amen. Right? Hey, you laying in bed? Come on, man. Don't waste the opportunity. Bridge that gap. <laughs> Here you go. Are you ready again? So he says, I said, I will climb the palm tree and take hold of its fruit. May your breast be like grape clusters and the fragrance of your breath like apples. Very important to brush your teeth. Okay. Listen. Don't be trying to have a, a, a mommy and daddy time after you done ate some garlic pizza. All right? Listen, don't nobody want that. Hit the, hit the toothbrush. Hit the mouthwash. He's talking about, hey, man, not only uh, is, your, is your physical beauty amazing, but even your breath. Now, back in the day, they didn't have Listerine. You know what I'm saying? They didn't have all the cool stuff we had. And, and truth be told, her, her breath probably wasn't the best. But to him, it didn't matter. He, he, again, he's complimenting her, right? He says, may your kisses be as exciting as the best wine, flowing gently over lips and teeth. When's the last time you kissed your partner? Now, I'm talking to the, uh, the couples in here that are married. Um, when's the last time you kissed your partner? And I'm not talking about... Like, when's the last time that you, you were, like, remember back when you were dating and you were making out, like, 
When's the last time you made out with your partner? Think about it. Think about it. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just saying, what caused you to fall in love with them in the first place? What were you doing when you fell in love with them and when you were dating and then you decided to get married? You were doing all this. You were doing special things for each other. You were telling each other special things, right? You, you didn't let a moment pass by where you didn't appreciate them, right? And you weren't doing these lame little pet kisses either, were you? That's right. Hey, hey, fam. You wondering why maybe your relationship is dead? It's because you ain't breathed no life into it in a while, amen? Listen, it's, it's not too late to hit that reset button. And, uh, hey, I'd like to challenge you. When you get home today, if you don't have no kids, hey, spend some time together. You know what I'm saying? Men, climb that palm tree. <laughs> That's godly. Amen? That's godly. And, hey, a lot of us haven't done that in a while, so guess what? That's your homework. You want to talk about not just hearing God's word but applying it? There you go. That's something that we can all apply. right? Well, not all of us, but most of us. So then I, 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 love, I love this, right? It goes on to the young woman. And, and the young woman, uh, this is her response. She says in verse 10, I am my lover's and he claims me as his own. Come, my love, let us go out into the fields and spend the night among the wildflowers. Let us get, get up early and go to the vineyards to see if the grapevines have budded, if the blossoms have opened, and if the pomegranates have bloomed. There I will give you my love. When's the last time you guys got up early and watched the sunrise? When's the last time you did something special like that? Here they're talking about, hey, let's get up early and go look at grapes, <laughs> right? I don't know if you know it, but we live in Fort Pierce, and it's called the Sunrise City. And not everybody throughout the United States get to see a beautiful sun sunrise like we do. So what would it look like if you do something special, and maybe next weekend you get up a little bit early and you sacrifice some time and you go watch the sunrise together? Go get some breakfast together. When's the last time that happened? Did y'all do that when you were dating? How many of you guys did that when you were dating? You ever watched sunrise or sunset or you did fun stuff like that? No? Man, okay. Hey, maybe now's the time to start. I'm just saying. All right? Then it says, 13. <laughs> there the mandrakes give off their fragrance and the finest fruits are at our door. New delights as well as old, which I have saved for you, my lover. And so she's talking about these mandrakes. Do you guys know what mandrakes are? Mandrakes would be the equivalent of uh, oysters, although oysters are a myth. But mandrakes were an aphrodisiac, right? Uh, they were a root. <laughs> now get ready. Use your imagination. Not, not weirdly, though. That resembled a part of a man. And the woman would eat the mandrakes because they were believed to be, what? An aphrodisiac. So listen, he had already smooth talker doing his thing, but then she's like, no, we're about to ramp this up even more. I'm about to eat some mandrakes. So stuff's about to go down. You know what I'm saying? They're about to, a lot of love happening right now. It would enhance sexual desire and marriage. And secondly, they believed that it would also help them have children. Because back in the day, they didn't just look at, sex as sex no it was also to bring kids into the world right uh, um, yes there was forms of birth control and different things like that but godly couples they believed if it was their time it was their time God wanted to bless them right and to help it on a little bit they ate some mandrakes and so the last the last little little piece I want to leave you with here the third the third thing I want you to consider if you're going to bridge the gap between intention and action is if you want something different be it there's a, a, a quote by Tim Curry and he says uh, don't dream it be it don't dream it be it so many of us spend most of our lives just dreaming not doing anything about it we have great ideas but we don't ever put no action to it 
Let me tell you what, if God has put something in your heart and he has pulled you to something, listen, he's brought you to it. He's going to see you through it. And if your life right now, if you're in a rut in your marriage, in your relationship, and you're wondering what can we do to spice things up to get that magic back, listen, you're not going to get the magic back that you once had when you were dating. But I, I, I got some encouragement for you. I got some great news for you. There's an even better and better magic that's waiting for you, right? There's better blessings that are waiting for you, right? I, I, I think sometimes, like, <laughs> we wonder why things aren't getting better. And what are we doing to improve it? You know, insanity, the definition of insanity is just doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over again, expecting different results. No, listen, if you want something different, then you have to be it, right? And all of this, all of this goes back to this. You want to be something different? First of all, you need to spend more time with Jesus. And for those of you that don't know Jesus, you're not a Christ follower, hey, that's where it starts. And you don't have to run to him. No, he, he, he's, he runs to you. He's there for you. I, I, I don't like the phrase when people say, I found God, you know, like, like, like you were looking for him behind the couch, like you were looking for a flip-flop. No, God has been there the whole time waiting for you to turn around He's been there picking you up. He's been there dusting you off. He's been there loving you, relentlessly pursuing you, sacrificially. And when I say sacrificially, I'm talking about his son. Because if he didn't love you, then there would have been no, no need for Jesus. So you want something different? Be it. You want something different in your marriage, your relationship? Do something different. we got to stop just thinking what are we going to do next? And we actually need to start doing it. We need to get off of our butts. We need to get off of the couch. We need to get outside of the four walls. And we need to and we need to go. And we need to put some action into it. We need to stop just being hearers of the word on Sunday. But doers of the word the whole week. Amen. Let's pray. Father, again, I'm just so thankful for your love and your grace and your mercy. I ask your blessing upon every one of these families in here, every, the singles, the teens, the, the husbands and wives, those that have been hurt by former spouses. I, I pray whatever they're looking for, how you make it so clear to them in these next few minutes, hours, weeks, days, show them, show them what you would have for them. Let them see, God, that you have amazing plans we just got to put some action to it. Father, again, I, I, I can't thank you enough for, for what you did for my wife and I in redeeming and restoring our marriage so many years ago. God, you knew that even though we talked about never being divorced, you knew that, that there were some troubled times that we were going to walk through. And I'm just so thankful that you didn't leave us in those times. No, you drew closer to us. God, you showed us what it looked like to be a godly husband, a godly wife, a godly family. And, uh, and so thank you. Thank you for all the relationships in here. And God, thank you most importantly for your son, Jesus. God, we love you. And, and again, we thank you. With everything we have, we thank you. And it's in the name of your son that we pray. In the name of Jesus, amen.